Hey Callie, this is Caden with Camelback Super here in Phoenix. Just want to give you a quick little tour of your brand new 2021 Super Forester Touring. I'm going to start with the back over here, go over a couple things with you. In the back, of course, you got your rear backup camera right there. To open the lift gate, there's a button beneath here, which I'm sure you may have found already. Just press that and let go. Opens wide up. This is all the space you have in the back. Yours should also have came with the privacy cover that hinges right here for privacy. It also is removable. You just pinch it in on each side, take it off. Now, if you want to store it away, if we lift this up down here, you got a little bit of storage. And your privacy cover can also go beneath down there. Your vehicle also came with two sets of floor mats. You got the all weather ones here, along with the carpet floor mats here. A cargo tray right here that keeps the cloth nice and protected. Now on the side over here, you got a couple switches for each side. This is to drop the rear seats down. So that way if you got load anything in, you just pull this guy back and it drops your seat right down just like that. One on each side, okay? Come to the side of the vehicle. You got your gas tank over on this side. Now there's no lever next to the driver's side to open it. As long as the vehicle is unlocked, you're just gonna push in your cover and it opens right up. You're just gonna use 87 unleaded regular fuel for this. Do not need premium. Now when the vehicle is locked, this will also remain locked. That way people can't just get inside of your gas tank here and siphon your gas. On the side here, it's the rear space in the middle. Go ahead and lift the seat up. You got your rear AC, of course. Two USB ports right there in the middle for charging devices, along with heated seats on each side for the passengers in the back. You'll also have a couple of different settings for the rear seat. If you pull this tug back, it's gonna allow you to recline the seat here and it's a couple different latches that you can kind of switch it out on, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and shut this door here. It's keyless access, as long as you have the key on you, you just put your hand on the handle and unlock the door. To lock the door, top out, have the key on you. Hold these two buttons down and they'll lock the doors for you as well. At night, you do have steering responsive headlights. And what that means is as you turn the steering wheel at night, the headlights will actually veer in that direction, giving you greater visibility as well. Now come along to the driver's side here. Of course, you got a couple seat settings. The vehicle does go forward, back. If you need to sit a little higher or lower, this button here will recline or decline the seat itself. And of course, you got your lumbar adjustment right there. A couple buttons over here I'd like to go over with. This is gonna be your power lift gate button right there, open or close. SRH stands for steering responsive headlights. Now, if you don't want the headlights veering in the direction as you turn the wheel, and you wanna keep it straight, that's how you turn it off right there. But it's a pretty cool feature. I have that at my Subaru as well, and I like to leave that on. For your lift gate, you also have a memory setting here for how high or how low the lift gate will open or close. Some folks have a lower garage, so if you need to adjust so accordingly, that's what that button's there for. This dial over here is for the brightness of your speedometer along with the center media screen in the middle. You're just gonna scroll through when the headlights are on at night. I usually keep on the second to last one. I find that one a good setting for myself. This is your regular traction control, uh, the auto start stop feature. That's the one where it shuts off the engine when you come to a complete stop at the red light to save some fuel. If you don't like that, that's how you turn it off. Now, it is regulated by the EPA that you do have to turn that off each time. You reset the car and start driving again. Uh, but most folks get used to it or they just turn it off there. There's also a sweet spot for that on the brake to where when you come to a stop and you hold the car in place without pushing the brake all the way down, just enough to hold the car in place so it'll keep the engine running as well. Now this button here, that's for your blind spot detectors on or off. Honestly, I think it's a great feature to have. Not sure why you'd want to turn it off unless you find the lights distracting, but that's how you turn it off right there. This over here, this is for the driver focus mitigation system. There's actually a sensor, which I'll show you. It's gonna be right about right here. It's a facial recognition sensor for safety. It can recognize if the driver is falling asleep or if they're not keeping their eyes on the road. If so, it's gonna give you a little warning, kind of tell you, keep your eyes on the road, pay attention. I'm just gonna go ahead and close the lift gate here. Now, there are two cameras up here. This is for your eyesight driver assist technology, and it has four different functions. First one's gonna be this guy right here. This is your lane departure warning. If you're driving and you start leaving the lane without using a blinker, it thinks you're leaving the lane unintentionally, so it's gonna give a little warning. Now, if you do use the blinker, you leave the lane, it's not gonna do anything. But if you wanna turn it off, 
just press and hold your button keep holding it down in the orange light indicator just turn the vehicle off for lane departure to turn it back on you're just gonna press and hold and the light goes away now I don't find it too annoying as long as you use a blinker it won't do much but if you consistently drive passing along different lanes without using a blinker it's gonna give you a warning uh, but I have heard nothing but great feedback about it but if you do want to turn it off that's how you do it next function this is your pre-collision throttle management. That one prevents accidents ahead of you. Should the vehicle think you may collide with the vehicle in front of you, it'll slow you down, brake completely if needed, to try and prevent the accident. Third function of eyesight is gonna be this guy right here. This is your adaptive cruise control. So that's what it looks like turning on cruise control. To set your speed, Cali, it's gonna be this middle dial. You flick it down, now you set your speed. So adaptive cruise control, not sure if you're familiar but what it does is it holds your speed, keeps you behind the car in front of you with a cushion that you can set your own liking. And it'll also keep you within the lane with the lane centering here. So these two right there. So from here, those are used together on highway. Once you set your speed, it'll keep you at a certain speed behind the car in front of you at a certain length. And also within the lane too. It's mainly for highway use. Um, and you can adjust that cushion with these two outer buttons. So this one will extend it out and this bottom one here will minimize it. Again, this one extends it out. And you can use it whatever liking uh, of a cushion that you like. Down here, the S and the I, those are two different drive modes. Uh, by default, anytime you turn on the car, it's gonna be on the I, but the S right here, it's like a sport button. So it's gonna give you a little bit more torque as you drive. The I over here, it's a bit more comfortable, more relaxing of a drive. Then buttons to the left, those will be for your media entertainment. Uh, source will cycle through XM, AM, FM, Bluetooth, etc. And then info will change this screen up here. Each time you press on the info button, it'll just cycle through the different information you have on the system. There's a little white box to the left that shows you what slide you're currently on as well. And you can leave it on whatever you like. That screen there may change depending on the driver assist technology as well. Coming down here, you got your climate controls. Now, anytime you adjust climate, it's gonna show up up here. You also have dual, which will change both uh, the driver or the passengers. Every, each person can get their own if you unsync it. So the passenger changed theirs, and the driver can adjust their setting. And then if you hit sync down here, it's gonna do whatever the driver does. So it's totally up to you. You wanna unsync it or sync it's right there. Coming down here, you have X mode. This is a feature great for off-roading. If you're going at lower speeds in different terrains, such as dirt and snow, or deep snow and mud. Uh, normal city driving, you will not need it. Once you go past like 20 miles per hour, it just shuts off. This is your electronic parking brake. So there's no more manual one. They're electronic now. To activate this, put it in park, you gotta lift it up. Little red indicator there along with the red park indicator to the right of the speedometer there. Now to disengage and put the parking brake off, you're gonna put your foot on the brake and then push this guy down. Now it's disengaged. And how I remember it, like on the manual one, it's up to lock, down to unlock. You got your butt warmers over here, high and low setting. And then AVH, that stands for automatic vehicle hold. This is a new feature most cars are implementing stands for automatic vehicle hold now when i push the button down here it's got to light up in green to the far right there so what this feature is used for is for driver fatigue normally at a red light you got to keep your foot on the brake but with this feature on now when i start driving and come to a stop if i push the brake all the way down there's a little circle indicator that will pop up right beneath there once the indicator lights up you can let go of the brake it holds your vehicle in place you can just relax until you hit the gas and go again. Might feel weird at first, but honestly, after a few days of driving, you may come to get really familiar with it and like that feature a lot. Uh, your blind spot detectors, I think, if you've been driving the car, will appear right here. The vehicle also has rear cross traffic alert. So as you back out, if the car is passing by, it'll alert and let you know. If it thinks you back out and you may collide with the vehicle from behind, it'll also brake to prevent that uh, accident too, should it think you may collide with the vehicle. A uh, couple physical buttons, you got your radio button, you got your map button for the built-in navigation, different apps for the car. 
The vehicle does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, to use those functions, you do need the USB port plugged in with the phone. And then from there, it'll mirror everything onto the screen there. On your radio, you got FM, AM, and XM. Favorite stations down here. To save the station, just tune to whatever station you like. Press and hold the number you want to save it on. Once it beeps, that's it. It'll save your station. You can do one to six stations, one to 12, or save up to 18 different stations. I also recommend hitting the HD radio button on, that way you get HD sound from stations that emit that signal to your vehicle as well. Uh, coming up above, the red button. If you ever get an accident, you do have advanced automatic collision notification, but if you do get an accident, your phone flies to the back, hit that red button, they'll send help right away. Uh, for this is for your moonroof right here, and it does open all the way back. You got little sunglass holders up here as well. And I want to say that's pretty much it. That's a quick little overview of your new 2021 Subaru Forester Touring. If you have any questions, just give me a call. My business cards are in the manual within your glove box, okay? Thank you for your time and your business, Cali. Hope you enjoyed the new Forester. And have a wonderful day. Take care.